Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Where's Poppy's ribbon? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah, we got a ribbon for Poppy. Are they comfy? Yeah. Poppy's still left after she had a ribbon. Oh. Oh, here's a ribbon. Oh, Poppy's got a ribbon. We're gonna open one more. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now. Hello, everybody. Merry Hello. Christmas. It's our anniversary, and we just wanted to wish you all happy holidays, and we miss you. And we'll probably see you sometime in the next millennium. <laughs> <laughs> happy <Possibly>. 2000. <laughs> As you can see, Bob is feeling fine. We're doing good, and we hope you are too. We love you all. Oh. <laughs> Who's doing that to me? I like this really professional setup you got going on. It's fun. Oh, no, you're not just to get me. I don't like that. Let me see that again. Hey, concussion boy. Hey, concussion boy! <laughs> well, it wasn't one of those things like you don't know what it's got till you're till it's gone things because I knew, but this woman that has been the mail carrier the whole time I'm here, she had hurt her badly, a tendon in her leg or something, and then she was still in physical therapy and it really wasn't getting a whole lot better, so she retired early. And she was just this really sunshiny person and really, you know, if I would see her, she would always stop and talk to me and we, we wouldn't do small talk necessarily, we did real talk and like one time about six months ago, she knocked on my door and, and she said, I just want to check and see if you're okay, I just had the instinct that you weren't and it, like, who does that? It was so nice, you know. It's just like this little ray of sunshine is gone. You know what I mean? It's like your favorite person to see at the store you go to or something. It's suddenly gone. Anyway, I'm really bummed because she was one of the only people I really talked to in the neighborhood. And then I felt looked after me. I felt like, well, Debbie will always notice if my mail starts piling up if I'm laying in your hurt. Oh, well. Where are the directions? Well, I don't think it does. This is a magnet here. Oh, I don't know why would I keep that Honey. I'm sorry. You seem uncomfortable with this. No, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I just think this is hanging out. You're doing something you love, and I'm doing something I love. What's yeah. wrong with that? Nothing. I hardly ever get to take pictures of someone else there. Most of the time, I don't want someone else there. I don't have a lot of lenses or really great camera, so it's just kind of doing the best with what you have. The colors there against the green. Just look at it. It's stunning. I never saw that in Long Beach. See the way it's like really red there and then really yellow there? Why is that? And I think it's just the position where the sun is. That's the only thing I can figure. Oh, wait. I just really like finding the unique little moments everywhere you go. I don't know. You, you get just the right light and you get just the right conditions. It's the most blissful feeling. It doesn't even matter if the pictures turn out. It's just that feeling of joy I get from all the elements coming together or watching the light hit really ordinary things and making them beautiful. I like that. I hardly ever take good pictures when I'm in a crappy mood. So it's better to be joyful about it and hope you get one or two that are worth saving. Oh, 
that's not nice. Not nice to what? I think it's too nice. You think it's too nice? Yeah. Should have thrown a fuck in there. Move your fucking car, asshole. Yeah. That should it should be I the think note. That's what it should have been. Oh, I'm sorry. Get me back a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I had to get it. <laughs> tell, tell them what happened. He blacked my driveway. I asked him to move it. You know. And he did. It happens two, three times a week. Sometimes they're nice about it, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes people retaliate by leaving TV sets on your lawn, which happened to me with the college kids next door one year. Mm -hmm. So I had to go talk to the big burly guy to ask him to move his truck. That's just a day in the life of body going, taking care of herself. <laughs> I got a real good close up of you. Oh, great. I got your left eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> You're flashing. Awesome. What does that mean? They've got a Boba Fett little guy on here. A little red light on the front of the camera. What does that mean? Recording. I just came out of a few years of a really deep depression, so I was feeling pretty good and feeling pretty positive and starting to feel like myself again. And then I hurt my hip and my foot. So now it's just kind of struggling through the days. The album download? Yeah. New playlist. There it was. I know. Why isn't this fitting in here? It is. It's gonna fit in there. Now it did it again. What happened? What do you Never mean? Never mind, it's going. So the disc is being burned? Yes, in my archaic world of still having CDs. It's. Because I have a CD player in my car still. Lay it on me. Tell me how old I am. What? I've been playing a lot more with just trying to get an impression of something rather than the very literal version. So you take pictures that are reflections from cars and from windows and in water and play with them when you get home, so. You see what I took a picture of? It's so cool. <laughs> Tell them where we are now, bud. We're in the happy homemaker's kitchen here. <laughs> and what are we doing? Feeding Ben and Ann. Send me! Birthday spaghetti. We're frosting cakes. <laughs> I think that puppy's done. Huh. Yeah, I tell you, those are puppies are hot. And my guys. Okay. Everybody go do your homework and be brilliant. It's crappy being this age and I, I don't know why I didn't think it would happen to me, but it did happen to me that, you know, I'm by myself now and I don't really like it, but you just have to deal with it because you're, you guys are both doing what you need to do. I mean, I always knew you go to New York and do what you're doing. I always felt that was your destiny. And I'm totally shocked that Ben wound up in Asia. Never saw that one coming. 
um, I think it would be easier, if, you know, if he were still here to have you guys gone, but what do you do? Just to stop at a red light in the car would be an adventure because you'd ask me so many questions in a row, you know. Yeah. Why is that one red and that one yellow? And why is that one always green? And Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger had a fight, who would win that fight? <laughs> and can you define democracy for me? <laughs> hey, could you uh, go into the bedroom and I could do my angel thing? No, because it, it won't do it in there, Tiny. Okay, let's just do it out here. Okay, I'm on we're number one. <laughs> I'm so popular. <laughs> well, that sugar cured ham. <laughs> <laughs> Take that camera. I only see you once a year, once every two years now. Uh. You just get a shower. Why are you so fuzzy? You're all steamy, Ben. You're wearing an old hoodie. You are not wearing a hoodie I gave you. Poop. <laughs> yes, it is. It's one of these ones you gave me, I swear. I like being alone a lot. I'm really into solitude. And sometimes I used to go, oh, when you guys were young, it, it was like, oh, if I could just have a day to myself, you know. I think I must have wished that too often because now that's all I have. I'd like to have some balance, but I'm really good at being alone. But I think it would be nice to have you know, more people in my life. <laughs> Stop it, Bob, you're wasting film. <laughs> I know you're wasting film. Stop it. <laughs> I think there's a lot of stories and things you don't know about when Bob was dying that someday I would share with you, but I think it would still be too hard on you. Well, do you remember 9-11? Yeah. Do you remember that day, what we did? Yeah. The thing about 9-11 is everybody always says it was such a normal day. It was such a normal day. And I always think, not for everybody, you know. My story was just one out of thousands in this country of people. But Bob had been in the hospital for 10 days for pain control, and they just finally said, we've just kind of done everything we can do to control his pain. And the day before, they had come in and said, it had been such a short time, they hadn't really diagnosed what kind of cancer he had. Or small cell, large cell made a difference or whether he could get chemo. But I felt he was too far gone already. <clears throat> but it turned out he didn't have the right kind of cancer for any of those treatments anyway. So that morning, I, I had been at the hospital till one the night before, and I got up around five to go back, and I don't know why, but at one point I turned on the TV and saw that the first plane had gone in, and they still kind of thought it was a small plane. And I woke Ben up and said, you might want to watch it, 
see the TV before you go to school. Something's going on with the World Trade Center, you know. And then I told him what I was doing for the day, and I asked, asked him to take care of the dogs. But when I got to the hospital, the doctors took me out in the hallway, and they just said, you know, Bob's deteriorating really, really fast. And they said a hospital is not a place to die. You need to take them home. And they said, we're going to do our best to arrange that, but it might be difficult because of what's going on. So by the time I got to the hospital, the second plane had crashed into the towers. And so, you know, Bob had just kind of gone through that morphine withdrawal after they put that disc in his back for pain, and he just kind of, he still couldn't quite, he still couldn't quite grasp where he was in terms of where, where his disease was. And because that morning when I walked in, he said, my feet are numb. I can't feel my feet. How do they fix that? And I just knew they wouldn't fix that. And I didn't really know what to say to him. I was kind of running out of comforting things to say to him. There was a lot of scared, frantic energy in the hospital wing that we were in that morning with the nurses and the doctors and the, everyone kind of coming into patients' rooms and watching the TV to see what was happening. And... At one point, he was eating oatmeal, and he said, he was like feeling the inside of his mouth, and he said, I think, I think the roof of my mouth is, is, is deteriorating. And I looked inside, he had me look inside, and I realized it didn't look anything like it used to. And that he was kind of consuming his own stuff like he was missing teeth and it, it looked horrible. And right at that moment, the second tower fell down. And I, I knew that thousands of people had just died. And I was just like a saturated sponge. It's like I just couldn't feel anything more at that moment. And I just kept thinking, what do I tell him when I turn back around? What do I tell him? Because it's like his, the roof of his mouth is collapsing. But I was trying really hard not to throw up. And... <sighs> But I hadn't eaten anything myself for weeks, so I wouldn't have thrown up anything anyway. One of the errands I had to do was I had to go to Target, and there was a, hardly anyone in the whole, you know, it was a, a mall then, and there was no cars anywhere. And I had to go in Target and get stuff for him to come home, you know, that I get diapers and insured drink and pillows and all this stuff and then Ben had just started school and I didn't get any school supplies for him and so I had to get that and then I had to get something for myself and it was just the oddest assortment of stuff and when I walked into Target half the lights were out and the whole mall beyond there all the lights were out and no you know no one was in the mall and I stood at the register and the woman kind of made a smart comment to me about, yeah, it's really necessary items on a day like today or something, you know, and and it was, I looked down and I said, well, this is, in my head, I just thought, well, this is what you need to help your husband die, you know, and I looked down the mall and it was so deserted and so dark and I just thought, that's my life now. I just don't think I've ever felt more alone than I feel right now. 
and this is my life now because he's not going to be there when, you know, I'm in the hospital or I'm in trouble. So we finally got him home around 5. And normally, the, you know, living on a cul-de-sac that would have been full of kids and people coming home from work, it was dead silent in the neighborhood. All you heard was everybody's TVs. And that after he settled in, you know, he wanted chicken noodle soup, which he never ate, but we had. And that's the last thing he ever had to eat. And he, he wanted to watch those the TV to see what was happening in New York, and those are the last images he ever saw on TV. And then after he fell asleep, I had like this table full of medicines to give to him that they figured I could do, and normally hospice comes in and weeds them out, which they did the next morning, but because of 9-11, they just they didn't make it out that night, so... Like the whole rest of the night was really, really rough. And at 10 o'clock at night, some college kids decided to move into the house across the street, and they were playing their music really loud, and I had to go over and explain to them that my husband had just fallen asleep, and he was, you know, he was in the living room. It was super hot, no air conditioning. I had the windows open, and they were really sweet. They turned it off, but it was so bizarre because... It wasn't a neighborhood with a lot of rentals, and we never had college kids before. It's just the whole day was so, it's probably the most challenging day I've ever been through. And like there's a zillion stories in there I can't tell you of things that happened that day, but... That was one of the roughest days of my life, that's for sure. That's all. Walking better. That's what that happened. Yeah. I finished physical therapy. I lost 30 pounds. I lift plates. See that? That happened. Can we just be in the moment instead of in the movie man? You want me to turn it off right now? Yeah. No. <laughs> How am I supposed to finish my movie if you don't let me film it? How will you know when you finish your movie? <laughs> mm, well, I mean, I'm almost there. <laughs> Just need that one last shot. <laughs> Can you say something deep and meaningful? <laughs> <laughs> Life is a mystery. Wow. Yeah. Is that Madonna? Oh, fuck. No, I'm going <laughs> to <laughs>
smell them to see if you, if you tried them on. Do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I think this is one of the best Christmases that we've ever had. I think that someday when you're rich and famous in this constant your great big old house or your New York apartment. We're still gonna look back on this and be really happy about this day. Because it's the three of us together in a happy way, which we haven't always been able to do since Bob died. And, and you know, you guys will have wives and girlfriends so it's nice, it's been just the three of us this time. Yeah. I loved it. Huh? I loved it. Yeah. Me too.